Hi, uh, I'm going to talk about adaptive security via deletion in attribute-based encryption. This is joint work with Rishab Goyal and Brent Waters. So consider we want to do public encryption in a large organization where everyone can send a secret message to another person by encrypting the message with, that, uh, with respect to that person's public key. A naive way to realize this is just let everyone publish their public key in a directory. However, this approach may be very efficient when we want to send a message to a group of people. We need to encrypt and send a message to each of them. Suppose uh, this group of people actually have some common features. For example, they all work in the same research group or they are all under or above some certain age. We can probably just send a message uh, an encrypted message to the people with all this feature uh, that can decrypt, but others without this feature cannot. Such a notion was formulated as attribute-based encryption in these two papers, Sahai Waters 2005 and Goyu Pandey, Sahai Waters 2006. In an attribute-based encryption scheme, every user has an attribute as an NB binary string, and we have policies, which can be seen as Boolean functions that take in n-bit input. These Boolean functions evaluate on the attribute and output uh, zero for reject and one for accept, means the attribute satisfies this specific policy we want to deploy. Uh, to issue keys, we run setup to generate the public key and the master secret key, Using the master secret key, we can derive secret keys associated with different attributes. And to encrypt, we use the public key and we encrypt with respect to a certain policy and the message we want to, uh, we want to put into the ciphertext. Uh, the policy can be like decryptors must be all graduate students and it's expressed as a Boolean function of attributes, as we mentioned before. And only users uh, with the secret key associated with attributes where this policy would evaluate them on them to be uh, one can decrypt the ciphertext and the rest cannot. And this formulation above is often called ciphertext policy attribute based encryption. Since the policy, the functionality is embedded into the ciphertext. There's also a dual formulation called key policy attribute based encryption that embeds the policy into the secret key and the attribute into the ciphertext. And both of these have constructions that have a lot of applications. Um, for both of these formulations, we also have two levels of semantic security requirement called adaptive security and selective security. So adaptive security is actually what we usually want in practice, and it's also called full security. The challenger generates, uh, the, in the security game, the challenger generates a public key and the master secret key. It gives public key to the adversary. The adversary can then make queries uh, for secret keys corresponding to some attributes he chooses and for, for, for polynomial in many times. This procedure can be seen as the adversary cr uh, cr uh, corrupting a bunch of user keys. And this, uh, this query stage can happen again after the challenge phase. Uh, in the challenge phase, he sends in a policy and a two messages of his own choice. But this policy must be one that none of the, uh, the attributes he has queried before, or he will query in the, the query phase after challenge phase, uh, like none of these attributes he will query will satisfy this policy. And the decryptor then encrypts one of these messages randomly with respect to this policy, the adversary gets the ciphertext and he's not supposed to get, guess which message is encrypted. This definition, even though natural, is in fact not easy to realize. Therefore, uh, people actually uh, turn to a weaker security notion called selective security. Um, adversary uh, in the selective security game, the adversary has to first send in the policy it wants to attack on before it sees the public key. And uh, this uh, in the full security, it happens in the challenge phase where the adversary can 
see the public key can make queries and then he chooses the messages and the, the policy. And here, here he has, has to send in this policy. And, uh, before he even sees any public parameters, uh, everything else, every other stages stay the same. And many of early works would, for, for, uh, would first try to build this selective security and later works move on to, uh, reach adaptive security. Uh, next, we can look at the line of works that try to build a secure ABE. Uh, we look at both group assumptions and lattice and both selective and adaptive security. So as we mentioned, uh, early works first to build selective security uh, in terms of group uh, constructions. These early works uh, build selective security ABE from bilinear Diffie-Hellman. And later, uh, there was this well-known dual system technique introduced by Waters, and the adaptive security was realizing these later works for policies in NC1. And they're based on different types of decisional group assumptions. Um, and however, uh, the reliance on decisional assumptions seems to be inherent uh, when using this technique, whereas in these early works uh, that only have secu a selective security, um, we can actually build from search assumptions. Moving on to the lattice side, uh, these works realize selective security for lattice, uh, from lattice for circuits. Uh, however, it was not until re a recent uh, two years that we finally know something of adaptive security from lattice. And just to mention here, this Boyan searching scheme was actually uh, actually had a tech uh, in last year, but we would uh, we would leave it here because it will be actually useful uh, when we talk about looking forward when we talk about our construction. And uh, uh, so the recent breakthrough we mentioned uh, was Sabari in two uh, 2019, realized the adaptive secure ABE from Lattice. Even though the functionality uh, realizable is only a subset functionality, it is a, a, a step towards adaptive security and it's a different approach from all past approaches. We therefore ask uh, the question, can we expand this approach in some way to make depth security hold for more general cases? Okay, in our work, uh, we simplified and expanded the framework of realizing adaptive security following a uh, summary uh, 2019 paper. We show that uh, in, our, uh, in a simplified framework, we can instantiate uh, uh, the uh, adaptive secure ABE for subset functionality from both search uh, by linear assumptions and lattice. And we can make the whole framework more clear and understandable. What's our high level approach? Our high level approach is just combining uh, two building blocks uh, uh, in an interesting way. The first building block is selective secure key policy attribute ba based encryption with a property that we call deletable. And we just require this uh, underlying key policy scheme, uh, ABE scheme to be selective secure, uh, but it needs to be for NC1 circuits, um, which we already have from some previous papers we mentioned. Um, and we will talk about uh, what deletable property means and uh, how we can realize that from previous work. Uh, the second building block is a constrained PRF with deletion conforming property. We'll also talk about that later. And together with these two, we can realize adaptive secure ciphertext policy, ABE. Okay, now uh, let's go to our first building block, deletable ABE. We demonstrate uh, deletable property as follows. Given a ciphertext, which is uh, an encryption of a message M to an attribute X1. And we can view the ciphertext actually as a bunch of block, uh, a composition of a few, uh, a few blocks, and then we can perform uh, an algorithm called delete on the ciphertext. This delete algorithm will take in the ciphertext and the set of indices. It will delete the blocks in the ciphertext indexed by this, these indices in this set. For example, two and four here, and we just take away block two and four. In fact, uh, the number of blocks is equal to the length of the attribute. And each block is actually just associated with one bit in the attribute. So uh, we can take a look at this delete thing 
the other way around. By looking at the attribute first, we can perform this algorithm called restrict that basically just remove some bits in the indices. Uh, in, uh, in an indices in this, this, this set given, and then uh, we, we can probably replace these places with a special symbol like a bot. And then we have this encryption procedure that can encrypt with respect to an attribute uh, that might have some special symbol bot and will still get us a valid ciphertext. And uh, uh, after we, uh, we, we see these two different approaches of doing deletion, we actually, uh, we, we say that we, they are actually indistinguishable once you get a ciphertext. So that basically means whether we encrypt, we first get an encrypt and the, then we perform deletion on the ciphertext by re removing a few blocks or whether we first just remove a few bits in the in the attribute and encrypt to this uh, uh, this uh, deleted attribute, we we can get a, another ciphertext, and these two ciphertexts should be in, uh, indistinguishable. Uh, we call such uh, we call an ABE scheme with such property uh, this delete procedure, this remove uh, restrict actually restrict procedures here, uh, and also this indistinguishability uh, property. The, such an ABE will call a deletable ABE. And now uh, we get to our second um, building block. It's this constraint PRF. Let's first look at uh, a usual constraint PRF. What properties do we have? So uh, a constraint PRF has constraint pseudo randomness property. So given uh, an original key of the PRF, which we call the master secret key here, we can constrain the key with respect to a function f. The PRF would evaluate correctly and normally on the constraint key when the input satisfies this functionality f that we constrain, uh, we constrain to. However, if an adversary is given a constraint key, he's not able to evaluate the PRF on any inputs that do not satisfy the function. More formally, he cannot distinguish evaluation on these inputs using the original key, master secret key uh, from any uh, uniform random values. And here we only need a single key uh, adaptive secure uh, pseudo randomness. And another property we need is called adaptive key simulation. Uh, that is, we let adversary choose a function f adaptively, adaptively and uh, there's a procedure called key sim to generate a simulated key for the function f. And it, it would give a simulated key indistinguishable from the const real constraint key. That procedure only needs to know, this procedure key sim only needs to know the function f and uh, uh, the security parameters and, in, uh, and input output size of, uh, of the PRF and no need for knowledge of any secret key information. So therefore this procedure can basically be done by anyone given the encryption of f and this will be needed in our encryption later on in our construction. Okay, and uh, now we move on to some special properties we need for our, our construction to conform with our framework, we call deletion conforming PIF. Uh, so firstly, uh, we can constrain that when we constrain the master secret key, we in fact just need to remove some blocks in this key in, according to a set of indices. So this would probably remind you of something we just talked about. The deletion, uh, uh, the restriction on, on the on the attribute that we can just give, uh, that when we are give, given a set of indices, we just remove some attributes, uh, some some bits in, in in that attribute, and this here we do the same thing to the mass secret key. Um, but how how do we know how do we know what indices to delete? How how is this correlated for f? And we actually have another procedure that that is uh, that takes in the de description of f. And it would just output a set of indices that uh, that to tell uh, that tell us what what to delete, what indices we should remove from the master secret key in order to to realize the constraint functionality for f. And secondly, uh, we need a, a a slightly special evaluation procedure, that is, we can evaluate the PRF on a hard coded input x using a special circuit evaluation. And this takes in a circuit hard coded with input X and the PRF secret key as input. It can be constrained or it can be the mass secret key and output a correct evaluation uh, 
as if you do just uh, if you do just using a, a normal PRF evaluation on the same key and the, uh, and the, that value x. Now we can build our adaptive secure ciphertext policy AB scheme from these two underlying uh, building blocks, the deletion conforming constraint PRF and deletable key policy ABE. Uh, the first way we can start by talking about the keygen algorithm of our ciphertext, uh, ciphertext policy ABE. Uh, our keygen algorithm takes in a master secret key, which is just uh, composed of PRF secret, uh, master secret key and the deletable ABE's master secret key. And to derive uh, a key for attribute X, we first compute this PRF evaluation on X using the PRF master secret key, and we get a value we call T. Then we run the underlying deletable ABE's keychain uh, with respect to the following policy. Just recall that this is a key policy ABE, so uh, the T key derivation uh, algorithm is respect to a policy. This policy FXT takes in a secret key. Looking forward, this secret key will actually be a constraint a PRF key that we will generate. And it outputs one if we have this PRF evaluation using the hard-coded circuit of X on input of that secret key SK outputs something that does not equal the T we computed, uh, we computed previously. And uh, we output zero otherwise. And then we need to encrypt the message. Uh, what do we do to encrypt? Well, we just, uh, uh, we're taking the, uh, the policy F and we can compute this simulated key using the PRF's key simulation algorithm. And recall that this can be done by anyone uh, because it only needs the description of F and security parameters. And after we get the, uh, the simulated key, we just encrypt the message is in the underlying deletable AB's encryption with respect to this attribute of the simulated key. And to decrypt, it's simple. We just run the underlying deletable AB decryption using the secret key associates with that previous uh, FXT we talked about. We, we get a, such a secret key and we can decrypt. And it's probably not very obvious at the first sight why the correctness would hold for our scheme. We uh, refer the orders to Check the details in our papers and take uh, it in fact takes use of these uh, non including properties of the PRF key, uh, simulated key and uh, the real master secret key. Uh, to show security, we basically hybrid as follows. So in our first hybrid, we switch the attribute used during encryption from the simulated key to a real constraint PRF key. So recall that in our real uh, Encryption, we need to do something, uh, we need to encrypt it to, uh, to an attribute and that we can generate by anyone because this is a public key encryption procedure and we can just run the uh, key simulation uh, on, a PR, uh, on, on the function f. However, in our hybrids, we can switch it to a real const, uh, constraint procedure on the master secret key uh, with functionality f. And this indistinguishability will just follow from the key simulation pro uh, property of constraint PRF. And secondly, uh, we use the restrict algorithm to, to perform the, uh, the constraint, uh, constraint functionality thing on the master secret key of PRF. And we have mentioned this uh, before that in our deletion conforming constraint PRF, these two operations are actually just equivalent. And this is just a, uh, basically pr uh, removing a few blocks from the uh, master secret key uh, using the, the set of indices that we, we need to remove for F and that would just perform the functionality of constraining master secret key to F. And finally, uh, notice that here uh, in the previous two hybrids, we, we perform this uh, uh, restrict or say removal on the master secret key, uh, which would give us uh, this attribute that we want to encrypt to uh, and then we encrypt respect to this constraint key attribute. Uh, and in the final hybrid, we switch the order of deletion. We first uh, uh, just uh, uh, normally use, uh, we just uh, normally encrypt with, with respect to attribute that is the master uh, secret key of PRF without any constraining using the deletable AB's encryption. And then we run delete on the ciphertext 
using the indices to delete for f. So we can still, you know, take uh, taking f, we can still just generate this uh, set of indices, and uh, that wouldn't disturb. Uh, that wouldn't really affect anything. We can we can do the deletion on the master secret key, or we can do the same deletion on the ciphertext. And then this follows from deletion of indistinguishability of deletable ABE. And finally, we can uh, in, uh, we can actually use this to break the sec uh, selective security of deletable ABE. And suppose the adversary can break the uh, the adaptive CPA security of our AB scheme in the final hybrid, and we can use it to break the selective CPA security of the underlying deletable ABE. And finally, how do we instantiate our building blocks? The first thing is uh, deletion conforming constraint PRF. We can realize it uh, a subset functionality just following the construction in these two works. And secondly, for deletable ABE, uh, we can uh, uh, realize that from from uh, from uh, some different sorts of works, uh, we can actually modify the following schemes into a deletable ABE scheme and uh, into deletable ABE schemes. For the group side, uh, we can uh, modify the GPSW uh, 2006 paper, which uses a search assumption on bilinear groups. And for the lattice side, we can do both Boolean searching and BGG plot sporting. Even though actually recently, as we mentioned, there is what was this attack on Boolean searching paper, uh, but that came out after the first draft of our paper, and uh, we just uh, we still leave this example in our paper just for the illustrative purpose to see how the deletion, uh, how the deletable ABE would work. And uh, Regarding uh, related works, actually, be, uh, uh, besides all these past works we already mentioned, there was also a concurrent work by Katsumata, Nishimaki, Yamada, and Yamakawa that extend the functionality of Sabari scheme into an inner product functionality. And they also follow uh, the same high-level approach as the Sabari scheme. Finally, here's our summary. Uh, with uh, adaptive constraint PRF, adaptive secure constraint PRF, and selective secure ABE, we can realize adaptive secure ABE. But the policy uh, is just a subset con constraint, which follows from the policy we can realize for the constraint PRF. And we need the ABE to be deletable, but we can build such ABE from a bunch of assumptions, both uh, search by linear and lattice. Thank you, that's it for our talk. Uh, please refer for more details in our paper.